Hello and welcome to part 11 of my Let's Play series of videos for Dwarf Fortress. I'm Sippy Cup. Okay, so if you remember from uh, the last video, where we left off is uh, that I was going to introduce you to trade in Dwarf Fortress. Now, um, at the end of the video I realized that the trade depot still hasn't been constructed. Without a trade depot to unload the goods at, uh, a caravan won't, you won't be able to trade with it. So, um, actually the problem is that even though my guy uh, that I enabled ar architecture labor for came up here and brought the materials and did his part of the work, um, it still needs masonry to be built. And right now, my mason is on break. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give a couple other people the masonry labor. I'm going to enable that in uh, Dwarf Therapist. So, let's go ahead and do that right now. So, I'll open up my Dwarf Therapist. I find masonry is right here. I'm just going to go down the list and enable masonry on a bunch of people. And I can turn this back off later, but just for now I want it to get built quickly so that uh, I can start trading. So let's commit these pending changes and we'll go back to the game and see if somebody wants to be uh, a nice dwarf and come up here and build this for us. So. Um, I'll go ahead and pause it until somebody comes and starts building it. Okay, here we go. So this gentleman, what's his name? Monam Aralzantir, my diagnoser, who I've made my honorary mason, has taken it upon himself to come up here and start building this. So it's kind of neat. You can see, um, you know, it's actually starting to take shape. Let me get these things out of the way. Okay, well. Actually, I probably shouldn't dismiss this just yet. Uh, what this screen is here, uh, this is the outpost liaison. He is kind of um, an agent who will find out what kinds of goods you want um, when the next caravan comes. So if there's something that you're really lacking, let's say you embark on a, an area that doesn't have any sand, for instance, and you need sand to make glass, um, you could come find it on this list and give it a high priority uh, meaning that's you know something that you really want to trade so here's sand so um, you know I can use my left and right directional keys to change the priority up here so this is just how bad you want it now I should mention that um, the higher priority you set for something uh, that means uh, basically you're telling the traders that you have a really high um, demand for this kind of thing. Well, the higher demand, the higher the prices. So uh, you'll probably see, like, if I set sand up to a high priority, and um, just by way of example, and um, finish that conversation, you'll probably see um, next time he talks to me, he'll give me uh, kind of a list of relative prices and sand will probably have a high uh, price modifier. So okay, this uh, depot is done being built. And here, so we're going to go look over the documents. Okay, so you can see, um, because I didn't assign priority to any of these things, um, uh, you know, I'm, I like, uh, if I had had the presence of mind, maybe I would have gone through and uh, set a higher priority on a couple of things, but just to kind of demonstrate the effect that priority has on your price, uh, percentage that you can see here. Let's scroll down and see what the price is for sand. So there you go. See, I set the priority up as high as it would go. They're going to charge me like twice as much for sand, but they'll be more likely to bring it when they come. So, you know, it's a trade off, it's a sacrifice you have to make. So let me pause for a sec. Okay, so. Um, that's all for now on that, and uh, now that the trade depot has been constructed, in theory, in theory uh, the trade caravan should be coming to put their wares. Yeah, so here they come. Uh, this guy's dragging in a mule, and there's some caravan guards that look like spearmen. So they're going to start unloading their goods here at the depot. So I haven't really uh, started making anything too valuable. Uh, so the demonstration is not going to be terribly exciting, but you can at least get a look at how you bring goods to the depot to trade, um, how you get a broker to come 
Okay, so here's uh, this the finalized agreement from before. Um, these are the kinds of things I think that they're gonna bring. Yeah, all right. So they close this here. Okay, so um, so let's get started. Okay, this guy's spamming me. Won't stop bugging me. Okay, so uh, first we want to bring goods to the depot so that we can uh, trade those goods to these guys. So what we're going to do is press Q, move near the depot, and you can see you have this option here, G, move goods to from depot. So let's do that, press G. Now these are all the different kinds of goods that I have. So using your arrow keys to navigate here, um, and I'm gonna, let's see, if there's anything I have a surplus of, not really. I don't really want to trade any of my bags, those are pretty valuable. Um, don't really want to trade my thread. Well, just, I guess I'll trade them some, I've got, I've got a, a ton of like uh, plants and fish, so I'll just um, use a right arrow key to come over here, and um, we'll take like a fish barrel, for instance. And you can even press V to view good and see what exactly is in this barrel if the good is in a barrel. So this has raw mussels in it from the stream nearby. So um, let's go and see what's in this one. Yeah, more raw mussel and raw mussel. So basically this is three barrels of raw mussel and each barrel has three units of raw mussel in it. I'll just go ahead and designate these for trade. So uh, you press enter and it will say pending here. That means that you've marked it for uh, trade. So now um, maybe I can see what kind of plants I don't need terribly bad. Plum helmets I'm using to brew into stuff. Um, so maybe I can find, let me find some of the plants that maybe my herbalist gathered if they have yet going through here and looking at the contents of all of these barrels. Okay, well it looks like all the plants I have right now are just um, plum helmets. What about seeds? What have I got here? Yeah. Okay. Well anyway, so, um, you know, I'll just I'll designate a couple obsidian here too, just for the heck of it. I'm, I'm not going to have terribly valuable goods. Three, you know, three barrels of raw mussels and some obsidian stone. Um, you know, I'll let you, I'll kind of leave the research up to you as far as, uh, what kinds of things are best to trade, but um, probably the easiest thing to make right away is uh, a crafts dwarf's workshop and then make rock crafts. Reason being, rock crafts um, tend to have a good value and uh, you have an abundance of stone, which helps you clean up some of that stone you'll have sitting everywhere. Um, and legendary, uh, legendary craftsmen can make some stuff that will be really valuable. So. Um, and certain kinds of stone actually have modifiers which affect the value of a good. And there are even degrees of quality to the good, so, you know, kind of the uh, almost like a Warcraft-esque uh, quality guide, you know, white, green, blue, purple. Well, it's similar in this game, except it's, um, you know, different levels of quality which culminate in uh, masterpiece or masterwork items, and those are the most valuable. So anyway, let's. Uh, these these goods have been marked for trade. So now I can press Escape, um, and these things will start getting hauled up here. Before um, I can actually trade them, I've got to have somebody designated as a broker come here to this depot. So you want your broker to be someone who has uh, points in the appraiser skill, um, because that will let you more accurately determine the worth of a good, both your own and the, the trader's goods. So what I want to do is first choose who I want to be the broker. Um, I don't have a broker right now. The way that you make a broker, and let me pause the game, is to go to the nobles screen. So N, nobles and administrators. You see uh, here right below Chief Medical Dwarf, there is this uh, office basically called the Broker. So I'm going to assign it to my expedition leader since he has these skills which are relevant to um, that position. So I'm just going to press enter to select him. So you see now my expedition leader is my Broker. Um, so let's go back to looking at this. So now um, I want to request his presence at the depot, so I'm going to press R, and that's going to say now trader requested at depot. Before it said no trader needed, but when you press R, it will say trader requested at depot. So that's going to tell him to come up here. 
Okay. Um, you can also, if you choose to, um, you know, if you're for some reason you don't have a broker or you don't have anybody with high enough skills or you know, whatever, you can actually press B to change it so that anyone can trade, not just a broker. Well, I want the broker to trade because I want to get the best deal for my goods. So I'm going to resume the game, and people, uh, my dwarves that have hauling enabled, the hauling labor are going to start bringing stuff up. As you can see, they're setting it here in the depot, and my expedition leader should theoretically come up here and wait at the depot, and uh, it looks like that's him right in the middle. So now I can trade. So we can press T, and here's the trade screen. Okay, so um, basically what you're looking at here is this is the trader's goods. This is what he brought with him and these are our goods, what we designated to trade. So all I've got, as I said before, are some obsidian and some fish barrels. This is all I brought to trade. I'm probably not going to be able to get anything for this. So, um, now, I just noticed something. As I started designating these things to trade, um, you've got certain uh, constraints that you've got to work within. One of them is allowed weight. Uh, this has to do with how many donkeys the trader brought and things like that. Well, uh, these stones are really super heavy. So you can see uh, this number here with the little kind of star uh, gem symbol indicates uh, the value of the item, the relative value in what some people refer to as dwarf bucks. It's, uh, there's not really an official currency in the game, so this uh, we'll just call dwarf bucks. So we can see that um, my appraiser, my broker, has determined that these uh, fish barrels full of raw muscle are um, worth approximately this amount of dwarf bucks. So we'll designate these for trade since there's not enough allowed weight to trade them whole stones. They weigh like, um, you know, this amount here. So 186, whatever this is, let's say pounds. Okay, so these have been designated for trade. Now if I come over here, I can choose what things I want from him. So uh, this gives you an idea of, uh, so this is the value of the goods that I've selected for trade. Well, I only have a little bit to work with, so you know, I'm going to look for something I can afford. Well, just, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to get some bronze bars from him so that I can make things out of the metal, and uh, maybe some, what else? Sure, maybe a piece of glass and uh, another piece of glass. Now you can see that um, the value of the goods I've selected is 80 dwarf bucks. The value of the goods that I've said that I'm willing to trade is 86 dwarf bucks, which means that the trader's profit is 6 dwarf bucks. Um, I don't want to hunt around for something that's worth exactly this much to make it an exactly even trade. So what I can do now <coughs> is press T to trade with him. And uh, as before, um, you can press V if you want to see specifically what something is, like if its name gets cut off here. So cave spider silk, er, I don't know, what is this? So let's press V, and you can see up here it's a cave spider silk rope. And it's, uh, you know, two pounds weight, basic value 60 dwarf bucks. You can press V again to view a description of it. It's a well-crafted cave spider silk rope, etc., etc. Um, anyway, so now I, wanna, I just want to go ahead and trade, so I'm going to press T. He says, "Ah, oh, wonderful! Thank you for your business." Occasionally, um, the trader might say, "No, I, I don't think so," um, and he'll make you, you know, a counter offer. You, you might have to offer him more goods, something like that. Um, if, if you've, if you've set things up so that the trader has got a profit, that's probably not likely to happen. But if it does, you know, just offer him more stuff. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, that's how you trade, and uh, you know. I'll start building up my trade industry so that I have more valuable goods to trade him so that I can get more of his stuff um, the next time, you know, kind of as the as the fort progresses. So now um, I can go here. So uh, this has basically um, kept my broker at the trade depot. Since I've already conducted the trade, I don't think his presence is required anymore, so I can press R again so that uh, he's not needed so now, theoretically, um, my guys will come and start hauling off those goods that I got, the bars and the glass. Okay, so that pretty much covers trade for right now. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments.